From last two weeks, we are continuously on this platform of knowledge sharing, and this is the 13th session. And smile that we have reached the halfway. Effective teachers create and implement classroom management practices that cultivate an engaging classroom environment for all the students. Our child is a potential genius. We have to start discovering our child, their learning styles, their learning levels. Alexander Den Hazel, a Dutch inspirational speaker and trainer says, you inspire people not by showing them how amazing you are, but by showing them how amazing they are. So with this, we have another outstanding session on engaging Disengaged students by Manisha Singh, ma'am. So I welcome you, ma'am, and over to you. Good morning, everyone. Prospective father, who will be joining us in any minute. Prospective vice principals. Prospective headmistress, ma'am. I think she is also not here. And my dear teachers. Welcome to welcome all of you in the 13th session of in-house training today. And as you have already seen, that the topic for today is disengaged, engaged, I'm sorry, engaging disengaged students. I would like to commence my training with a mantra. Oh. Goddess Gayatri is said to be the five faced goddess. Good afternoon, ma'am. She knows the five senses and the five pranas. The five senses sight, hear, smell, taste, and touch. And the five pranas the reception of the mind, the circulation, the digestion, and the excretion. Through this mantra, I invoke the goddess of light to illuminate our path as we progress in our life and guides us move closer to the higher consciousness. Let's start the topic today, the engaging disengaged students. As teachers, we know that one of the most challenging things we face in a class is to hold the interest and attention of students while carrying out our lesson plans. And through this session, we will be able to discuss the barriers to student engagement. We will try to identify the tired interventions to support disengaged students. And we will try to list some creative ways to engage the disengaged learner. One Gallup poll reported that 55% of the students graded from kindergarten to 12 are engaged or ready to learn and invest in the learning process. Interestingly, the poll also states that 28% of the students are disengaged and 17% are actively disengaged. Now the question arises that what is music? And why? What is missing over here is the emotional, the social, and the academic health of our students. Let us try to find out the topic, what student engagement is. Student engagement is a measure that reflects the quantity and quality of students' participation in their courses and every other aspect of their educational program. Also, it echoes a student's interaction and cooperation with peers and teachers. In other words, student's engagement is the measure of a potentially successful learning experience for everyone concerned. Student engagement refers to the student's willingness, need, 
desire and compulsion to participate in their curiosity, their interest, their optimism, their passion, their enthusiasm and effort, their trustworthiness, the degree of attention, participation in challenging academic activities. To better understand this, let us examine what engaged students look like. Here's a word art on the screen. I hope you are able to see. These are some of the attributes or male's qualities of an engaged student. An engaged student is always active in learning. He or she does homework, willing to spend effort, is inspired, is uh, able to take risks as well. Now what does a disengaged student look like? Let us try to relate a disengaged student through this image. I hope you all agree to the image that somehow the disengaged students look the same way the way I am projecting in the image, the puzzled one, the one who doesn't know anything, the one who is in his or her own zone, the talkative one, the sleepy one, the one creating her own beautiful world. Now there are certain signs that helps us understand that students are not engaged in the classroom. And the very first sign is they misbehave. This is the very first sign that helps us understand that the students are not engaged. When a student does not follow the classroom rules or distract others, it's a clear sign that they are not engaged in the class. Common classroom misbehaviors are relatively easy to identify. They may include falling asleep, passing notes, talking out of turns, rudeness. It's important to remember that a lack of engagement can be due to several factors such as boredom, frustration, or personal problems. It's important to identify the root cause of misbehavior in repeated offenders. Moving on to the next slide. They are unresponsive. Even if a student does not disrupt the class, it doesn't mean they are engaged either. If you continuously call on a student to answer questions and they never can or appear not to have heard the question, it's a red flag for disengagement. An unresponsive student may also take longer to complete tasks or do the bare minimum. At the same time, remember, a quiet student does not equal to a disengaged one. The third one. They do not perform well. Even if a student is in the class, is disengaged, sometimes they do not perform well. Poor performance in the classroom may be one of the most important signs of disengagement. This includes lower test scores, incomplete assignments or missing assignments altogether. Poor performance can also appear as a lack of motivation and understanding. In other words, if students don't understand what practical purpose the lesson serves, they are more likely to disengage. Like misbehavior though, it's important to look for other reason a student might be underperforming. It is also important to note the, that poor performance can lead to disengagement. In other words, be sure to look for the true cause and not to focus solely on the symptoms. Now there are certain barriers to students' engagement as in the very second slide I mentioned it that we will try to find out the barriers to students' disengagement. So the first one is course content doesn't relate to students' real life experiences. Teaching the relevance of course content helps students grow into engaged, motivated, and self-disciplined learners. As a teacher, you have no doubt heard the classic, when am I going to ever use this stuff from your students? When students don't feel that the coursework serves any other purpose than assessment further, it makes it hard to stay motivated and engaged. By demonstrating relevance to your students, you are adding a new source 
of inspiration to motivate students on a personal level. The second one, instruction doesn't cater to various learning styles. As you have no doubt experienced in a packed classroom, it can be difficult to ensure every student has the ability to learn their way. But catering to a specific learning style may limit a student's ability to take information in ways that differ from their preferred learning style. By teaching students using a combination of visual, auditory, reading, writing and kinesthetic methods, you offer students the chance to learn their way while teaching them how to learn in ways they may find more interesting. The third and the last barrier. There can be n number of barriers. I have mentioned here three. Student confidence may be declining. Now, students are under incredible amount of stress. We all know that throughout the pandemic as well. And as per well, we have seen the online classes started, they are struggling with the studies. Some of them are unable to write anything. Some of them are unable to get what a teacher is teaching in the class. Some of them are unable to speak in English. There are lots of pressure on them speaking English to behave, to match up to the whatever expectations their parents are having with them and the, and the teachers as well, as well as the tutors and the friends too. So with that stress comes significant strain on their confidence. And we know that confidence is a crucial element for success. To help keep our students thriving, look for the students showing signs of low confidence and empower them with the outside help. Let us take a look how we can foster students' confidence. The very first way to foster confidence in a student, show you care. Informal interactions can go a long way towards improving student self-confidence, motivation and performance. Be engaged, make direct eye contact when speaking with students and follow up within 24 hours to any opt-out class inquiry. Believe in their potential. Approach students with the belief that each student has the potential to produce a good work and succeed. Students will appreciate this positive reinforcement and feel both encouraged and empowered by it. If you offer praise, be sure it's truly earned because hollow flattery erodes trust. Stay open to new ideas, share your expertise, but also be open to new points of view students express. Make a special effort to encourage creativity and free thinking. Provide constructive feedback as necessary uh, rather than criticism that would deflate confidence and discourage future participation. Foster problem solving. Empower students with the tools to discover knowledge for themselves. Promote manageable academic tasks that gradually move students toward successful completion of solving methodological and applied problems. Give them the joy of discovery. The fifth one, subdivide big projects. Frame big projects as the achievement of several smaller tasks. Deconstructing assignments this way with the help of rubrics, models and examples make big projects less overwhelming for students. The sixth one, Acknowledge their achievements. Provide opportunities for students to look back, to see how far they have come. Acknowledge what they have already learned and see the big picture. This builds confidence in their skill set and motivates them to move forward with their remaining coursework. Monitor students' performance. Catch problems early by carefully monitoring student performance. Formative assessments can help with this as can digital platforms or regular reviews of your grade book as well. Early interventions can sweep away small problems before they grow into insurmountable roadblocks. The eighth one, explain the red pen. Most of the times we used to write comments in the notebooks. So train students to view your comments as opportunities to improve rather than a personal affront. 
Make your comments specific so students can use them as a fuel to improve the biggest confidence booster of all. Invite participation. Draw students out of their shells and into the class conversation. Call on them by name. If you don't normally do so, we have attended n number of meetings in which we have already and continuously been told to call out the name of the students. So do not call them, call number one or two. Hey, you listen. So we can't. We should not do that. We should ask them. We should call them by their names. So and give them time to express themselves as well. This conveys that you value them as individuals and will help them grow by formulating answers on their own. The last one, be patient. Remember that students are likely new to your subject matter and may need time to absorb the course material. Nurture them along and remind them to be patient with themselves. No one is perfect on day one. Even when we joined the school, we were not perfect. We as students were also not perfect in every class. It took time. It took time for us to manage everything. So, if they go in expecting perfection, they will only be disappointed. Cut the destructive cycle before it starts. Moving on to the next one. Now, as I have already mentioned in my slide, that we will also try to find out the tired interventions to know what is the reason behind the student's engagement, disengagement in the class. So the first one is we must identify why students are disengaged in the class. What do you know about your students' lives and how to best position them for success in the classroom? Do they have siblings? Are they living in safe, stable environments with supportive caregivers? You can survey students trying to reach even those frequently absent to understand their lived experiences, the relationships they have formed at school and what they deem as high quality learning experiences. Connecting and understanding the data on how students perceive their learning environments may help you learn about students who are chronically absent and find ways to re-establish and maintain engagement for them. These are some factors. On one side, we are discussing, we are going to discuss the societal factors that affect this engagement as well as on the other side, there are some school factors that affect this engagement. As you can see, the key factors, the societal factors are personal attributes such as boredom, identity, school connectedness, academic motivation, sense of belonging and low self-esteem, socio-economic status including financial resources, parent occupation and neighborhood, family factors including family dysfunction, mental illness and disability, and the last one, race, ethnicity and gender. Additionally, a range of school factors that somehow affect the disengagement. It includes the attendance, the absenteeism and suspensions, participation such as homework completion, extracurricular activities and school transfers, the behavior, achievement in literacy and numeracy, relationship with teachers, parents and peers, bullying, conflict with teachers, poor peer relationship, poor parental communication. The next tired intervention. Establish a number of engagement supports to your students. Consider whether your school culture and school curriculum truly meeting your students' academic, social, emotional and behavioral needs. As teachers, we must adopt intentional and system-wide practices that can prevent students from becoming disaffected. Framework like multi-tiered systems of support, MTSS, can give teachers the access to high-quality instructional materials, help 
teachers use early identification and intervention strategies for students whose engagement is diminished and provide resources for students who are looking to re-engage. Let us look at the video what MTSS is. multi-talent system of supports. It's a framework with a tired infrastructure that uses data to help match academic and socio-emotional behavior assessment and instructional resources to each and every student's need. MTSS allows educators to focus on supporting all of their students in a systematic approach, improve the outcomes for all students. address the unmet needs of many students and group of students, help students to grow no matter where they start. And it's a system level approach to aligning supports at the right intensity according to the students' need. As we have already seen that the MTSS works at three tiers. The last one, the last intervention, show them that you care. There should be a strong connection between teacher's empathy and warmth and improved student behavior, motivation and achievement. What does this look like in practice to keep students engaged, move away from learning activities that are
teacher-centered and create ones that empower students to see themselves in their work. Forming youth adult partnerships characterized by student voice and shared decision-making can build a classroom culture and meaningful relationships which help students feel connected and want to come to school. When students' engagement is going downhill, we often find ourselves reaching for the prop box. We pull out random videos, time-sucking resources, overly complex activities, anything to get and keep attention. But even these materials can't compete with our students tricks, pain tricks, doodling, and the discussion of what happened at the recess. And there's a simple reason why. Our students aren't engaged by things, they are engaged by us. That's why the best and the easiest ways to increase student engagement come from you. Let us try to find out the creative ways that will engage our students in the class. The first one, connect learning to the real world. We, as I have already mentioned earlier, the students, most of the times they ask us that when am I going to ever use this stuff, whatever we are reading in the class. So answer this question and you will engage students with the content that they know is relevant to life beyond school. Use anecdotes, case studies and real life examples from outside the classroom to root your teaching in the real world. The next one, engage with your students' interest. Find out what already engages your students and build it into the learning process. Using mathematics as an example, you could have students chart their performance in a video game over the week. You might even get your budding social media influencers to calculate a projected number of Instagram followers. Learning what excites your students does more than just engaging them. You will build strong relationships and rapport too. The third one, fill dead time. Dead time, what is dead time? It is any point in a lesson where students are left without something to do. You might be handing out a worksheet, getting a presentation set up, or waiting interminably for a video to load. These are brief windows that leave just enough time for students to, do, to tune out, after which time it can be very difficult for them to get back. Fill these blanks with low order activities to hold students' attention. This should be a quick, easy and require my minimal follower. For example, think, pair, share. We have already been, we have already gone through the 21st century skill, the skills and we are already following it in our lesson plans also and we are carrying out in classes as well. So we need to do that a bit more because carrying out all the techniques in the class is quite impossible but then also whatever is possible to follow up in the class we must do that. Think, pair, share where students reflect on something, discuss with a partner and then share with the rest of the class once everyone is ready. Quick write. Write down three questions or points that have been raised by the lesson so far. What do you already know? If you are just about to dive into a new content, ask students to identify three things they already know about the subject and jot them down as bullet points. Use group work and collaboration. Collaborating with small groups gives students a welcome break from solo book work. They will benefit from each other's perspective and the ability to verbalize their ideas. Use your judgment and knowledge of who works well together when organizing group work. Engineering the groups might avoid troublesome partnerships while allowing students to work with friends 
might generate the buzz you need for more productive activity. Encourage students to present and share work regularly. Giving students a regular opportunity to share their thoughts and demonstrate learning in front of their peers drives engagement in two ways. First, it makes students accountable and the second one, it lets them hear from someone other than their teachers. If your students quiver in fear at the thought of speaking in front of the class, combine presentations with group work. A few ideas, have students present in groups after a group task. Let students share each other works within smaller groups before asking them to choose one piece to share with the rest of the class. Let students read or present their work while sitting down. It avoids the pressure of having to stand and deliver. Ask for one contribution from every group after discussion with each group nominating a spokesperson. Above all else, make presenting and sharing a regular part of class activity. Give your students a say. If you don't know how to engage your student, let them tell you. Give your students a say in classroom activity by providing them a choice of different activities, for example, group work or solo. Seeking students' input for assessment design, for example, student can choose a final product provided it meets the curriculum or the criteria. Periodic check-ins to monitor the pace of delivery, for example, do we need to go over this a bit more slowly or are we feeling pretty confident? Giving students a choice also fosters their sense of ownership over their learning. They will move from passive consumers to active learners with a stay in the classroom activity. Read the room. Scaffold task with checkpoints. If you are steadily losing students to doodling, off-topic chatter and the pervasive need to tear and ball up little pieces of paper. It's time to shake things up. Cut the activity short if it's dragging. Clarify instructions if there's confusion or switch to a more student-centered activity for greater engagement. And remember, it's impossible to have every student engaged 100%. Good afternoon, Father. Of the time. The next best thing we can do is to notice disengaged and respond to it quickly. The second point is scaffold tasks with checkpoints. If you dump all your instructions on the student at the start of a lesson before turning them loose with an activity, confusion and disengagement will likely follow. That's why it's important scaffold larger tasks by breaking them into achievable steps. Each of this can be separated by brief checkpoints of instructions, reorienting students and reminding them of what needs to be done next. They also serve as a periodic call to attention when students are liable to go off track. Emphasize discovery and inquiry. Sometimes the best thing you can do for engagement is to get out of your students' way. Let them discover learning for themselves without being spoon-fed. They will exercise critical and creative thinking and pursue the lines of inquiry that interest them. This doesn't mean that you should retreat behind the desk Observe your students, listen to them, and talk to them what they are thinking. Be their guides, as opposed to their instruction. Ask good questions. If you ask good questions, you will drive rich, engaging discussions that are open to everyone. Good questions should be open-ended to avoid yes-no answers, equitable, 
open to answers of varying depth and complexity, legitimate, asked because you want to hear students' thoughts and opinions, not because you are fishing for a correct answer. When students answer a question, engage with their response. Even if it's incorrect or misinformed, recognize their effort and use it to refine the question further. For example, you are on the right track, but could we think in this way as well? The next one, allow for thinking time. It's gratifying to see hands shoot up as soon as you ask a question, but letting your students think it over has two benefits. What are those benefits? The first one, it leads to more considered responses that drive engaging discussions. And it also makes the conversation accessible to those who don't have an instant answer. The next one, shake things up. Predictability is safe, but it can get boring. Mix up your stepple teaching st strategies with new and novel activities from time to time. Talk to other teachers for ideas as well. In addition to engagement, you will also be giving your students an example of what it means to take a risk and try something new. Give brain breaks. Periodically give students a breather with brain breaks. These are short activities that allow students stretch their legs before returning to work, feeling focused. For example, wiggle brain breaks, doodle time, scribble, crossword puzzle, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 technique, find it fast. These are some brain breaks that can be given to the students in the class to engage them. The next one, be personable. Relationships and rapport are pillars of lasting engagement. And you can't have either without being personable. This means getting to know your students and letting them get to know you. While enthusiasm for the learning content might ebb and flow, your smile, your laughter and conversation will engage students every time they walk through your classroom. Encourage friendly competition. Start lessons with your introductory books. Engage students from the outset of your lesson with an introductory hook. This could be anything that picks interest, establishes relevance or inspires curiosity in the subject of the lesson. For example, a personal anecdote, a brain teaser or challenge question, a multimedia source. Keep your hooks short and save them directly into an overview of the learning goal. Use mixed media, laugh together, weaving humor throughout the classroom. It will lighten your lesson as well and makes a way for a more fun experience. Laugh with your students and don't be afraid to let them laugh at you time to time as well. Present learning content in a variety of mediums, including video, audio, and digital resources. Using such tech-rich resources is engaging for two reasons. It's welcome change from the stacks of paper our students are usually saddled with, and it reestablishes a direct and relevant connection with the digital world as well. Gamify learning. We have already attended a lot of trainings by CBSC how to gamify our learning as well in the classroom. Games are the most important source of engagement as well for students, not only inside the class as well as outside the class, and they are equally effective too at driving engagement in learning. Transform activities into games by including levels of difficulty, rewards, and competitive elements. How we can gamify our learning as 
well in sharp. She was a goal for the game, for the game. All classroom gamifications should have a purpose. There should be some goals. General, it can be any goal, a general instructional goal or a specific learning goal or a behavioral goal. Whatever goals you choose, make sure they are clear to your students. They will lend the game a sense of purpose and ensure it's a vital part of learning journey. Encourage friendly competitions as I have already mentioned it earlier as well. Pitting students against each other will motivate students with a competitive spirit. So they are less intimidating alternatives as well. For example, whiteboard races. Group three or four students together to see them compete. And every student loves the opportunity to use the board as well. So call them and group them as well together. This will lessen the pressure felt by individuals. Teacher versus student. This one is perfect for behavioral goals. Set a rule, for example, everyone has to stop talking within three seconds of a call to attention and award students a point every time they follow it. If they don't, that's a point for you. Make sure there's a reward for the winner at the end. Give classic games an educational twist as well. There's no need to reinvent the wheel when classic board games and card games can easily be adapted for learning as well. Here are a few suggestions. Scrabble, Monopoly and card games as well. Make process progress visible. See, when the progress is visible to, their, to our students, they feel motivated because it shows learners how far they have come and how far they have got to go. That's why video games use progress bar and experience points that steadily build as players own their skills. You can easily transfer the same approach to the classroom. Help students set a quantitative goal. For example, I am going to do five activities in this week and use this to create chart or list where students can pick off each step toward the goal as they complete it. Level the learning. Leveling up is a motivator in any game and one that can be applied to learning as well. Break a single learning goal into levels that learners must pass before moving on the next stage. For example, suppose you are teaching addition in the class. So the first level should be to teach them simple single digit addition. The second level, two digit addition without regrouping. And the third level should be two digit addition with regrouping. Keep score with points. Scoring is another way of making progress visible. So create point systems. Make sure it's transparent to the students because students might love to see their scores as well. And these students, these points will make them believe in their academic achievements also, the goals they wanted to make and their effort as well as their, for their positive behavior too. Give mastery tokens. Instead of giving a generic A, B or C, create a token for them. Suppose a student is very good at multiplication. Give him a token of multiplication master. The same way you can give these tokens to other students who excel in your own subject. Make it personal experience. Just as video games let players choose a character, you can give your student a sense of ownership over the learning goals, learning game, by setting their own target or goals for success, creating their own progress, tracking system. Give them rewards. A reward could be anything from a name at the top of the leaderboard, a merit award, a virtual certificate in a gamified learning program. As I've already mentioned earlier, learning is profoundly social. A positive environment that supports a sense of belonging is key to student success. 
instead of asking a question this way, why do these students have poor social and emotional capacities? We must ask, how can we ensure our school climate that will lead to the healthy development of students? Here are some school-wide actions that we all must follow to make learning profoundly social. Students need to know that adults care for them, genuinely believe in their potential and have their best interests at heart. Belonging is linked to better academic, psychological and health outcomes. About 25% of students are classified as having a low sense of belonging. Teacher support is one of the strongest predictors of having a sense of belonging in school. Emotional support from teachers is linked to social emotional learning development in students as well. Bill Milliken quoted, it's relationships, not programs, that change children. Young people thrive when adults care about them on a one-to-one -one level and when they also have a sense of belonging to a caring community. Here is this one video, one last video that will somehow make us understand that we should work not only for engaging students but we need to empower the students as well. Let's see the video. Let us be nourished and protected. 
May we work together with great energy. May our studies be effective. May we never hate or fight one another. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you everyone. productive session and it was very enriching and help us in preparing our lesson plan effectively. You raised an issue of post-COVID ch uh, changes among learners and different challenges they have faced. So differentiated planning is needed for the differentiated learners. Thank you for selecting this an important topic and sharing your knowledge here. Uh, I directly connect your topic with the effective lesson planning where teacher provide an opportunity to each child to meet their learning objective and to feed their untiring zeal. And, uh, and above all you have said it's very important to create a positive environment, the sense of belongingness. And I'm sure that our teachers have got lots of takeaway from this session. And thank you once again for this beautiful session. And thank you teachers for your valuable contribution and your honest and sincere feedbacks are expected. Please submit it to Amit sir.